Recoil. It's that satisfying kick in your shoulder after you fire a rifle. But how much recoil does the next generation squad weapon have? Does it kick like a mule or whisper sweet nothings into your ear? We recently got our first unvarnished look at the 6.8mm being test fired and everyone in the comments section here lost their collective sh** over one aspect of the rifle. That's a lot of recoil. Like a damn M1. Coil is questionable. Recoil on those looks stiff. And I can't read all that. It looked like the rifle's recoil was out of control. But those aren't experts, right? Those are a bunch of keyboard warriors. Well, a lot of experts are saying the same thing. Nicholas Drummond is a defense industry consultant and commentator. He's an ex-British Army officer, and he had this to say, quote, the Army's NGSW 6.8 millimeter caliber requiring chamber pressures of 80,000 PSI. Recoil will also be an issue. Tom Beckstrand wrote over at gunsandammo.com saying, quote, my immediate concerns when learning of the high pressure ammunition were recoil and barrel life. Tom goes on later in the article to say a lot of those recoil concerns are actually addressed by the designs of the 6.8 millimeters muzzle brake, and we're gonna get into that later in the video. So everyone is worried about one thing here with this bid to replace the M4. Will the 6.8 millimeter round have too much recoil compared to the old 5.56? Come on back in time with me to the year 1903. That was the year the US military started using the 30-06 ammo type, and they stuck with it all the way until the 1960s. Every single major military around the world has made that exact same switch. So we found the perfect round with the 5.56 ammo type, and we can stay there forever, right? Wrong, because body armor came out in the early 2000s, and it had the ability to defeat a lot of those 5.56 rounds. So now every military around the world is racing to find an intermediate round with enough power to penetrate body armor, but at the same time, it can't have too much recoil. Now, there is a saving grace here. The Army recently helped develop a type of suppressor that is made to reduce the recoil significantly. I think the Army's plan here is to run all these weapons suppressed all the time to help combat that recoil. Task and Purpose writer Jared Keller did a great story covering this new technology that's been coined the Smuzzle. It sounds like a Muppet character. It's partially inspired by the muzzle break on the 155 millimeter Howitzer Cannon. And it's being tested on the NGSW. So Greg Orbelin is the co-creator of the Smuzzle, and he said, quote, a few years ago, we were asked whether our next generation squad weapon should have a muzzle brake or a suppressor. We asked ourselves, why not both? End quote. So a muzzle brake and suppressor combination is a match made in heaven, if you ask me. Muzzle brakes also function better to reduce the rifle's recoil when it fires at a higher bore pressure. That seems counterintuitive, I know, but that's how physics works, I guess. If you look at Sig Sauer's rifle patent bid, they use a special system to reduce the recoil. The whole barrel and bolt assembly recoils inside the receiver up against a unique buffer that's located to the rear of the rifle. General Assembly is also doing their part to reduce the recoil, and the bullpup rifles don't need as much high pressure to fire that bullet at a higher muzzle velocity because the barrel can be longer. Let us know what you think of the 6.8 millimeter recoil. Do you think it's going to be too much to replace the M4? Let me know in the comment section below.